Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and today we have another episode from Taiwan. This time we are just outside of Taipei and in this episode we're going to be taking you on one of our favorite hikes to a place called Yinhe Cave which is this beautiful temple in the side of the mountain. It's going to be a gorgeous hike and then we're going to continue our hike up to Mao Kong where we will be having a classic Taiwanese mountain feast all kinds of delicious mountain foods and then taking the beautiful Mao Kong gondola back down into Taipei. It's gonna be a really exciting day so make sure to stay tuned until the end. So let's go. We are starting our day here in an area called Bitan which is this beautiful riverside park. There's a suspension bridge. You can rent these uh, pedal boats to take out on the river and we're just gonna be getting some breakfast before we start our hike just near here. So we just popped into this super local looking joint that is serving rice noodles. We just ordered up a couple different things waiting for our dishes to arrive. This restaurant is right off the side of the street, just a little hole in the wall, and she's got this big bowl, like this big cauldron of different things bubbling away. She's got the rice noodles in there, she's got the tofu in there, and then lots of different uh, organs, and then she's got all the braised organs just laying out. So it's a very local joint. I love that I'm just surrounded by the beer boxes and some of the vegetables. We've got a big spread of food, so let me introduce everything. First off right here, this is the radish, the daikon radish. So it's been braising away in that big cauldron out front and then she's actually put quite a bit of sauce down here and then a little bit of cilantro. Over here, the braised tofu also in that same pot out front and then with the same sauce. And then back here, we've got the rice noodles. This is what this place is popular for. So you can th see these really like short cut rice noodles nice and white and then a little bit of uh, Chinese celery on top and then here we've got a big plate of meat this is the ribs um, just chopped out with the bones attached lots of ginger and then a little bit of cilantro this is a really traditional meal and it's definitely gonna fill us up before our big hike so let's dig in let me start by trying some of these rice noodles here with a little bit of celery They really don't have too much of a flavor. The texture of the noodle is completely different than a wheat noodle, uh, for example, and it's cut really short, so it's really thin and slippery. I like to kind of compare it to, in the West, you might have different types of bread, like a soft white bread or like a hard uh, baguette or a sourdough or something. So even though there's lots of different noodles, these rice noodles are like having a completely different meal, but they definitely need to have some of the chili sauce added to them. We've got this big jar of what looks to be a homemade uh, chili bean paste and you can definitely add a generous amount of this stuff. It's, it's actually not usually that spicy and uh, mix that around and that's where a lot of the flavor is going to come from because those are pretty plain as is to be honest. Mm. A little bit of heat, a little bit of kind of funk from that bean and then a little bit of sweetness as well. A little bit of sourness too. That actually gives it a lot more flavor, so it's a lot more enjoyable. Let's try some of this daikon radish, a little bit of cilantro, and then quite a bit of that sauce. That daikon radish has been stewing in that same broth, so it's taken on that very simple flavor of that broth, same as the noodles. And it really reminds me of Japanese oden, we always eat the daikon radish, and then that cilantro flavor too, kind of fresh, earthy flavor. Next up, one of my favorites, the tofu, and it looks like she's put down the brown sauce, but also a little bit of some red sauce too. Let's give this piece a try. Mm. Tofu just completely melts in your mouth, fall apart, and then it's got this little thin layer on the outside which is a little bit more firm and a lot of that flavor is just in that little layer on the outside and then covered in that same sweet and sour sauce. Now we got this big huge plate of meat here. There's like all kinds of different bits and pieces in here. This is all pork. Um, 
let me grab this piece here and I'll grab a little bit of ginger and try to eat some of that meat off there. Mm. Yum, that's so tender, wow. Everything here on the table has a similar flavor, very simple flavor, that time with a little bit of ginger and that meat is just crazy tender, completely falls off the bone. I don't know how long she's had that stewing away in that cauldron out front, but I'm guessing it's been hours, countless hours, because that is so tender. That's actually really, really good. Really traditional food. It's always good to stop at a little place like that and just get some really cheap, hearty, delicious food. That's the kind of the true flavors of Taiwan, in my opinion. And now we're just gonna head to grab a taxi at the station and we gotta take the taxi to the trailhead and then we'll start our hike from there. So just grabbed a couple Snickers bars from 7-Eleven. Uh, let us know down in the comment box if you'd like us to make a full 7-Eleven video. We've been contemplating it for a while and these are just in case we get too hungry on the trail. So let's go get one of these taxis. All right, I think it's safe to take these off. We are about 10 minutes drive from Xindian Station and how much was that, 175? 175. 175 for the taxi, so pretty cheap. You're definitely gonna have to take a taxi here. Otherwise, I don't know how long that would take to walk, a couple hours or an hour at least. And this is the start of the trail, so let's start heading up and go check out this really cool temple on the side of the mountain. Hey, check out the size of these leaves. Oh, they're huge. Wow. So far it is absolutely beautiful out here. We've been in Taipei for about two months and we haven't been getting out into the nature enough. It is one of the best parts about Taiwan, as I mentioned, that there is just so much untouched beauty outside the cities. The cities are really dense and populated, but as soon as you leave them, there's all this beautiful jungle nature. Nice, clean, cold waterfall. That's really cool. That feels good. So that was probably only a 30 or 45 minute hike to get to the temple. We're gonna keep going for quite a ways past this, but you can see it up here behind me. It is so beautiful. And this place is really unique because it's a temple, it's a cave, and there's a waterfall. And the waterfall kind of goes over the path, over the trail, and kind of over the temple. And it's just absolutely beautiful. There's a lot more people here than I was expecting, but uh, reasonably so because it is so gorgeous. So we're gonna go up inside the temple now and go check it out. So I'm inside right now. It is really cool in here. Honestly, I think I like it better inside than looking at it from the outside. It's actually in a cave. So there's this kind of crevice in the side of the mountain that they've built the shrine and the temple inside of. There are these incredible views over the valley below. And then there's this little kind of lookout area that you can stand and take a really cool picture. But I just love the shrine right set inside of the mountain and uh, you can keep going up the stairs and go underneath the waterfall and that's where we're gonna continue to Malcolm.
Whoa, there's a nice breeze and a little bit of a mist. That feels good. So right at the top of the stairs, there is this guy here behind me. He's one of the eight immortals of China, and that's all I know, and the only reason I know that is because I read the placard down there. So if you guys know some more info about uh, him, maybe let me know down in the comment box, but we're just gonna enjoy our snicker bar before we head on for the rest of the hike. So the trail after the cave started out as a lot of stairs and now we've kind of reached the plateau. It's pretty easy walking now. There's not too many people on the trail, but a couple people, a couple people behind us and it's really quiet up here and just really green lush. And now it looks like we're starting to go down. Yep. So the area we are heading for Mao Kong is famous for one thing in particular and that is tea. And this is tea right here. So not a whole lot of it right here. We're still at kind of a low elevation. I think we're at around 300 meters, 250 meters. And uh, tea tends to grow at higher elevations here in Taiwan, but really beautiful. This trail is really gorgeous. <laughs> so we've just made it to this little ridge where we get our first view of Taipei 101, the iconic building of Taiwan off in the distance. It looks really small from here, but it is not small. It is 101 floors. Really beautiful views. Yeah. All right, we've made it to the end of the trail. That was actually not too bad. And you can see maybe we are at Mao Kong. And this area, I guess, is famous for cats, but also for tea. And that was probably all in like an hour and a half, maybe two hours but there was only one section that was kind of rough and that was just the stairs going up. So we're actually gonna eat up here in the mountains before we take the gondola down. So there are a bunch of different restaurants up here serving classic mountain fare and we just picked one that has a really beautiful view over Taipei City. You can see Taipei 101 in the distance and they've got a lot of different things on their menu but we're actually gonna go for this two person set which is a thousand Taiwan dollars. Let's order and then we'll start eating. Oh yeah, that is good. It definitely gets a little brisk up here in the mountains with the wind and hot tea is perfect for that. Our first dish has arrived. This is the fried rice with egg, but this one is a little bit unique. They actually put green tea in it. So you can see the little bits of green tea kind of sprinkled on top there. Some uh, vegetables as well. And I'm not sure if this is gonna, what this is gonna taste like, if it'll taste like tea or not, but let's find out. Wow, yeah, it does taste just like tea. Wow, wasn't really expecting it to be that strong. I thought it was just gonna taste a little bit bitter from the green tea they added, but it actually tastes kind of like matcha. It's got this really nice earthy flavor and then a nice oily fried rice. Nice first dish of the meal. So we have two more dishes from our set menu. Both look beautiful with their presentation. And this one here is really interesting. So this is tofu with some mountain veggies. It has this little fungus on top and then it's actually got tea leaves right in there, which is awesome. Some uh, long beans and some carrots. And then over here is the smoked chicken. And this is chicken that has been smoked with tea leaves. Super cool. Looks like some pickles, some salt and pepper, but I'm gonna start with this tofu with the fungus and tea leaves. coated in that sauce. It's a little bit sweet of a sauce. And then that tofu is so ridiculously soft, just like the tofu we had this morning. And then those tea leaves give a little bit of a bitterness. Okay, next up is the tea smoked chicken. I'm gonna dip it a little bit in the salt and pepper. This sounds really good. Mmm. Oh, that is awesome. Super, super smoky like infused with smoke flavor. And then definitely a little bit oily, a little bit uh, salty and with that pepper too. 
That is really good, but it's served cold, so don't let that catch you off guard. It's pretty common here, but really smoky and delicious. Next up is the deep fried shrimp. We're not too far from the ocean, even though we're in the mountains. And you can see that there's all these little flowers. It said roses, but I'm not exactly sure it's roses or not. And they're fried to a crisp. I'm gonna try to take this and I think what I can do is probably just take the head off and I can probably eat it with most of the shell on. Mm. Yum. That is covered in all kinds of different spices. There's a little bit of chili flakes on there, a lot of salt, a lot of white pepper. And then you can definitely taste that floralness coming from those flowers that are on there, those roses. Super crunchy shell, but it's okay to eat it. You could probably even eat the head, just really crispy because it's been deep fried. Our vegetable dish is next, and this is a type of mountain fern you can see there. And then it's been covered in bonito flakes, which is a dried fish, and then some peanuts. So this stuff is really good, really healthy for you. Let's try it. Mm. Mm. That's a really nice, crisp, refreshing vegetable. Nice and uh, sour. I think they put a little bit of citrus on there. And then there's like a sweet dressing as well. Bonito flakes give it a little bit of seafoodiness, but definitely not overpowering. That's really good. I love this stuff. It's so, so, it just feels so hearty and good for you. Directly on our table, we have a gas burner, and one of the dishes that I was looking forward to trying the most is this soup, this big soup that's served in a pot here. And if we look inside, there's all kinds of things. So first off, you'll see there's actually a tea bag. That's tea guan yin, which is my favorite type of tea. There's all these goji berries floating around in there. Tons and tons of different types of mushrooms. Look at all the mushrooms, big ones and little ones. And then there should be some chicken in here. Put it in my bowl. Oh, that smells so, so good. Oh, that tastes incredible. I think there might be apples in that broth because it tastes a little bit fruity. And they had some other ones on the menu that did include apple. You can definitely taste the tea guan yin and then all of those mushrooms and that chicken. Oh, that is so good. Okay, I gotta try some of this stuff inside. Let's try one of these mushrooms first. Mm. It's got that kind of chewy mushroom flavor, nice and stewed, so it is a little bit softer than usual. Next up, chicken. Wow, so tender. Wow, just infused with that broth. This is such a hearty, healthy tasting meal. That's what mountain food is all about. These really hearty ingredients that fill you up and they're super nutritious and really gorgeous views. I love the food. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit skeptic because this is a touristy area, but the food is really on par. It is awesome, I love every dish. So we're just gonna sit here and enjoy the view, enjoy the food, keep eating. How was the meal? It was so good. The soup is nice and warm, it's warming us up because the wind is blowing and it's quite cold up here in the mountains. Everything else is nice and healthy and delicious. Everything has different flavors. It's amazing. What's your favorite? Mmm, I think the chicken is actually my favorite. It's really good. And then there's this like interesting pickle. And I don't exactly know what this is, but uh, I, it has like an osmanthus flavor. And I, it's like one of my favorite smells and flavors in the world. So I really enjoy this chicken dish. So as we were just leaving, they gave us our dessert, which I guess they forgot to give us at the end of the meal. And this is a tea popsicle. Is it good? It tastes exactly, exactly oh my like gosh. tea. And uh, ooh, Plus it's kind of bitter. Too. A little bitter. Ah, I like it. That's nice. So the sun has come out, it is warming up and there's barely anyone up here. It's so beautiful, you can hear the birds. There are cats around and all kinds of little shops, cafes, places to buy tea, tea leaves and uh, you could just sit up here for hours and look at the views over Taipei. It's not the clearest day per se, a little bit of smog, but um, it's still just really peaceful up here. So to get off this mountain, we're gonna take the Mao Kong gondola down. This is a gondola that goes all the way down the mountainside, all the way down to Taipei Zoo. It's very scenic, it's very beautiful, and you can use your easy card, so it's very convenient to get down as well. Let's go. Oh. 
So the gondola has two different kinds of cabins, the regular cabin and this. This is the crystal cabin. So as you can see, there is a glass floor bottom and soon enough we're going to be over the mountains and you're going to be able to see all the way down. It's going to be really cool. <laughs> Don't break on me now. Whoa, this is so cool. Wow. There are some parts where you are really high off the floor or the ground. We're just going over a little river right now. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> Thank you. That was really fun. It's a lot longer than I remembered. I don't know how long that was, maybe 40 minutes? Yeah, probably. Or maybe not quite as long, 30 to 40 minutes, but it's just super, super long. Like the, the cables are really long and a lot of fun, really cool views. Definitely recommend the Crystal Cabin. Yes. It doesn't cost any more. It's just usually there's a bigger line to wait yes. and it was 100 Taiwan dollars so per person. So pretty good deal, really fun and definitely recommend it. All right, what a fun day uh, hiking out to the Yinhe Cave. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Really beautiful, one of our favorite hikes in all of Taiwan. So we'll put the information so you can do it yourself when you visit Taiwan down in the description box and um, also really delicious food up in the mountains. What was your favorite dish we had, Sabrina? Um, that's, that smoked chicken with yeah. the tea was insane. The flavors were amazing. Yeah, I love that soup with the mushrooms and the chicken oh, yeah. and the tea. Yeah, really good. And then the traditional breakfast we have had was also really delicious. Yeah. So make sure if you haven't already subscribed, hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video from Taiwan. And if you'd like to support our channel, consider checking out our Patreon and becoming a patron and you can get some really cool perks like our bloopers videos and also our personally curated food maps to help you find some really delicious food on your travels and we'll see you on the next episode of chopstick travel soon bye bye, bye.